I'm going to make a quick tutorial for assembling a, uh, the, a one of the drafting table projects. So I'm going to start by clicking on New. I'm going to pick a standard IAM. Open this guy up. I'm going to place component. And uh, these are all the parts that I have in my drafting table project. And I'm going to start by placing two sides for my table. So I'm going to pick on that, pick Open. There's the first one. I'm going to pick right over here, right click, Done. Now this one is the one that's grounded and you can see in the tree that it was the first one placed. There's a little push pin next to it which means it's going to stay in place and all the other parts are going to try to align themselves to that part. Next thing I want to do is set up relationships between these two sides using constraints. I'm going to select constraint and one of the first ones I'm going to do is use the flush constraint and I'm going to select on top of that surface and the top of this surface and that aligns them along that plane and I'm going to apply that and then I'm going to do the same thing picking right here and right here and that will align those along that plane right there and I'm going to apply that. Now next thing I want to do is get the distance between the two set right and what I'm looking for is 30 inches from the outside edge of this side of the table to the opposite side of the table. I want 30 inches total width and the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use a flush again and I'm going to pick uh, this plane and this plane and actually even though it looks like one leg disappeared what it, what's happened is they're just sharing the same space right now so I'm gonna go over here and put an offset of minus 29.25 and then apply now the reason why I did 29.25 is this from this surface to this inside surface is 29.25 but because this part is three quarters of an inch thick if I take 29.25 and I add that thickness of 0.75 the total from outside to outside should be 30 so let's confirm this by going to the tools tab and picking on the distance tool and selecting this corner and the opposite corner over here and see what it says inside the distance box and it says now that that measures 30 inches I'm going to go back to assemble and I'm going to place a PVC tube that's 30 inches long and I'm going to place it, I want it to go right inside these two holes here, I'm going to pick right there but then also I use that for storage over in these four holes over here so I can pick one, two, three and four more of those and right click and pick done. Now let's look at constraining these. We're going to pick on the constrain tool and this time we're going to use the insert option which is this button here. We're going to pick insert. We're going to use what's called an align constraint and I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this and for my first pick I'm going to pick on this edge of the PVC tube. Now I'm in the second pick mode and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to pick on the outside edge of this hole and it pops that right into place and uh, it's going to be a flush mount and so it's, it's flush with the opposite side because that's 30 inches long and my legs are 30 inch apart on this guy so I would place these other ones in the same way I would pick on the insert uh, first let me let me okay we're gonna pick on that one let's zoom in here we're gonna pick our first pick will be here second pick will be here and that would put that one in and I would continue to do that process until I put all the others in. I'm going to apply that and close. So I don't, I'm not going to take the time to put those others in and so the next part is to put the table top onto this and what I've done is made a tabletop assembly that has two pivots on it and those pivots are going to pivot around this PVC pipe and uh, that's actually how the table height adjustment works. So I'm going to go to place and uh, I have this top assembly right here. I'm going to pick on top assembly, pick open, and I've gotten some kind of a message here. I'm going to pick, right click, done. So here's my top assembly. Now I'm looking at that, I see I have a problem. My assembly needs to be rotated 180 degrees in this direction because right now the orientation is not right. So I'm going to accomplish this by the way that I do the constraint on this. So I'm going to go to constraint. I'm going to select the insert constraint again. I'm going to stay with the aligned option. And uh, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to pick right out here on the outside edge. 
So I'm actually picking flush with this edge right here. I'm going to pick that for my first pick. And now Inventor wants my second pick, so I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to spin this guy around and zoom in. And for my second pick, only done here, I'm going to pick on the outside edge right here. And let's go back to the home view. And what you're going to see is the pivots are aligned, but right now the pivot for the top and this side are kind of meshed together over here. So what I want to do is I want to move the top 0.75 inches in that direction, which is going to be negative 0.75. And so what I'm going to do is adjust my offset right over here. And I'm going to go minus 0.75. And you see how that move that over 0.75 inches and apply. All right. I can close this. Now here's the cool thing about that. My top is constrained and can move now. I only have one problem. When I move the top down here, it goes right through the side piece. And the same thing happens over here. You can see that the top is cutting into the side piece. So let's talk about setting this up to where when I bring this to here, it doesn't go through like it's doing right there. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to look over here at the tree. And the, the parts involved are the base side 1, base side 2, and the top assembly. Since top assembly is already selected, I'm going to right click on that one and I'm going to select contact set. I'm going to go to base side. I'm just going to pick it, right click, select contact set, go to base side, right click, select contact set. And at this point when I move them, they still don't stop each other when they when they connect and here's why. I need to do one more thing. You click on the inspect and what we want to do is activate the contact solver. And as it says there, it allows Inventor to detect physical contact between components in a contact set. So I'm going to pick on this. And now watch the difference. I'm going to pick with my mouse and hold down with the mouse. And when that tabletop hits the legs, it stops. When I move it this way, when it hits the leg over here, it stops. Now, we can see that better if we look at the side view. So I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. You can see when I move this, it stops right there. When I move it this direction, when they come in contact right here, they stop. Now the key to these parts being able to move with the contact solver on is they cannot make contact as they pivot. So the way I design my table is that the pivot piece right here allows for a 32nd of an inch of clearance between those two parts. And really it doesn't matter what I use as long as I have some clearance in that. So that's the key. So let's go back over here and look at that. And there's what our table looks like with a few assembly constraints on it.